Good morning students, I'm Mr. Buscarini and for today's lesson we're going to talk about mass and volume. So, um, in order to arrive at the end of this unit where we're going to see how to define or calculate the density of an object, we first have to introduce the two concepts of mass and volume. So by the end of this lesson today you should be able to define the volume of an object. But let's start with the um, definition of mass. Now, so what is mass? This is one of the most important and usually most um, misunderstood concept in early physics. So let's go straight. Mass is defined as the amount of matter in an object. And we're going to see more in detail what that means. So, but just basically, it means how much stuff you have in an object. And what is the base unit for mass? The base unit is called the kilogram. Unusual, yeah, you, you would think it's a gram. No, it's actually the kilogram because all the uh, units of mass are based on an object. This small cylinder here, which is kept near Paris, this is this reference kilogram, okay? So this is where all the other units of mass are derived from. And as I told you, definition of a physical quantity is not complete if we don't give also the means of measurement, in the case of mass, we can use a scale, like this one you see over here, or a balance. So we're going to learn how to use different uh, means of measurement of mass. And as I told you, um, mass is a very, it's really a key concept. It's one of the basic physical quantities. But it's also one of those which is uh, very often misunderstood. So let's look at a few key facts. We're going to explore more about mass later on, but let's see a few of them. So, the mass of an object, what does it depend on? It depends only on the number and types of molecules that are inside that object, okay? And also it depends on how they are arranged. It doesn't depend on where the object is. It doesn't depend on gravity. That's called weight. Okay, that is the most common misconception, mass versus weight. So this is what mass depends on. And of course, our, in our experience, a larger object is usually more massive. We can also say heavier, but let's say more massive. Of course, that is not always the case. Now let's look at this example here. We have an elephant, which it's a very large animal, but it's way smaller as as far as size goes with a hot air balloon, but I hope we all understand, much lighter, less massive than an elephant. So just keep in mind, bigger isn't always heavier, where heavier in this case means more massive. The key component here will be another physical quantity called density. The next part is about volume. So again, the definition, what is volume? Uh, we say that volume of an object is the quantity, the amount of space this, this object takes up. Um, simply put, we can just say the volume is how big your object is. Now, things get interesting when we talk about the units for volume. So, now it's really important that we go a, a step backward and look back at the units for length. You know already that the base unit in an international system of units for length is the meter. In short time, uh, or abbreviated, is M. Not surprisingly, if you want to look at the base unit for surface area, we're going to use the square meter, or meter squared, which is the area of a square with a side of one meter. At this point, it's also uh, pretty obvious to understand that the base unit for volume will be what we call the cubic meter, or meter cube, which is represented with m to the power 3, which is the volume of a cube with a side of 1 meter. So, but now, for practical purposes, most of the time, instead of a meter and its derived uh, units for surface and volume, we're going to use, most of the times at least, the centimeter, shorthand centimeter. And here it's really where we have to be careful about converting from one unit into another. So let's look at these um, numbers here. Now you know that one meter is 100 centimeters. If we use uh, the powers of 10, that means 10 to the second centimeters. And that's pretty straightforward, that's pretty easy to do. 
So let's look now at the square meter. Now a square meter, as I told you, means one meter times one meter. Now every meter is made of a hundred centimeters. So we can rewrite this as 100 centimeters times 100 centimeters. 100 times 100 is 10,000 square centimeters because centimeters times centimeters is square centimeters. If we use the powers of 10, we're going to get 10 to the 4 square centimeters. So as you can see, we already went up by a power of one, uh, by a factor of 100. Now, there's 100 centimeters in one meter, there's 10,000 or 10 to the power of 4 square centimeters in a square meter. So just imagine this exercise. If you were to um, have a piece of, a square piece of paper with a side of 1 meter, and you want to see how many small squares with a side of one centimeter will fit in, you'll see you'll need 10,000 of those. And things get even bigger when we talk about the cubic meter. A cubic meter is, as I told you, the volume of a cube with a side of one meter. So it's one meter times one meter times one meter, which means 110 centimeters times itself for three times. That means one million cubic centimeters. So one cubic meter is 10 to the 6 cubic centimeters. In short, this means you have to be very careful when you do conversion between units. One thing is when you convert units of length, a different story is if you convert uh, with units of area, and finally it's another story when you convert from units of volume. We're going to do several exercises about this just to get make, make you more uh, comfortable with this kind of conversions, but that's all for today. Goodbye from Mr. Buscarini.